All right. Sabal uh, Khair. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ty Flanagan, and I'm with the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, and we're going to talk about Wikipedia in the classroom. So first, just kind of some brief, a brief introduction. Um, I'm with the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, that's the nonprofit that supports things like Wikipedia. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about Wikipedia and some of the, our other open knowledge platforms today. And um, how, you, how you can use them, why do they matter, how can they be improved. So I really thank you for this opportunity to talk to you today, to integrate it with our conversation about open source. Um, so we, Wikimedia does develop an open source platform called MediaWiki, which you may use uh, or may have heard of. Um, but we're also going to be talking about open source in terms of open knowledge and con contributing to knowledge around the world. I wanted to start with this image just as a backdrop for our conversation. So I'm not sure how clear it is to everyone around the room, but you, I think you can see that it's a map of the world, a different display. You have a red circle around Western Europe. So there, are, there is more geotagged content on w Wikipedia, and we're talking about 44 different languages of Wikipedia inside the red circle than outside the red circle. So um, we are currently located outside the red circle. Many of you come from countries that are outside the red circle. So I hope this is concerning to you. Um, I hope this inspires some action. So let's, let's talk about Wikipedia. I imagine most people in the room are familiar with Wikipedia. I would bet that everyone has used Wikipedia. I don't know if you'll admit it or not. Um, and I bet that many of you probably use it in different languages. Um, so you, you may or may not know that Wikipedia is the encyclopedia that anyone can edit, and we encourage everyone to edit and everyone to contribute. Um, it started in English in 2001. I really enjoyed hearing about Newpedia in our, in our introductory keynote. Um, so it was after the new PD idea didn't work. Let's try something new. So this idea where everyone can edit and there is content that is stable is kind of paradoxical. I've heard someone describe it as it works in practice, but not in theory. In theory, it should be chaos, but in practice, we actually have an English encyclopedia with over 5 million articles and nearly 300 other language Wikipedias. It runs on MediaWiki, and MediaWiki is our open source platform that is the wiki software. So you can, you'll see MediaWiki used in private deployments, um, in business deployments, um, but that, it, and about half of our foundation, uh, the Wikimedia Foundation, is dedicated to things like software development and technology. Um, and, and as I mentioned, uh, it exists in different languages. So if you've looked at English Wikipedia and you've looked at Arabic Wikipedia, you've probably seen some stark differences at times. Um, for example, I was looking at the Wikipedia article for the Grand Mosque, the Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque here in Muscat last night because I want to visit tomorrow. And the article in English is quite small. And then I looked at the Arabic version and the Arabic version is actually more detailed than the English version. Um, but as you'll see, that's usually not the case. I was also really happy to hear yesterday some of our speakers, especially Ms. Tan from Malaysia, was talking about community. And community is the core of Wikimedia. Um, we would, Wikimedia is a gl global community of editors from all over the world who edit in nearly 300 different languages. Um, this is all these little pixels on, over there is our, our annual global gathering, which happened um, last year in Italy. And our next Wikimania, which is what we call it, Wikimania 2017, is in Montreal in August. Um, so it's, it's where a portion of the global community comes together to share face to face and to learn from each other. And here is another slice of people. These, these are the staff of the Wikimedia Foundation. So the foundation is quite s relatively small. We're about 300 employees um, all around the globe. Um, I was talking with someone in India who knows one of my colleagues. Um, and this is us in January. So the Wikimedia Foundation says, imagine a world in which everyone can participate and share in knowledge. And that is the commitment that we have. And that's, what, 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 that's our vision that we operate under. So Wiki Wikimedia is more than just Wikipedia. Um, on the right, you'll see uh, a circle that shows different logos for the different knowledge projects that we have. Um, 
We have, we have projects that focus on open data, like Wikidata. It's one of our newest wikis, but I think it's the one with the most potential right now. So if you're in interested in structured data and open data, you should check out uh, Wikidata. It's a, it's a really cool project, and I can even talk more about it offline or in my workshop later. There's other projects like uh, Wiki Commons. So if you are into, it's our open Creative Commons licensed file repository where you have photos, videos, um, source material in the public domain, and those are all available to freely use and to freely share. Um, and so I, I'll probably touch on a few of these other projects in my presentation, but I will pr talk more about them in my workshop, which is in the exhibition hall later, I think at 1030. So think, looking back at Wikipedia, there are almost 300 different Wikipedias. And I say different because each wiki is different. So if we're just looking at Arabic and English, there's quite a difference. There's over 5 million articles in English, and there are less than half a million articles in Arabic. Um, so this is just a rough count, and, and I think there's more than just article numbers, but it's kind of a good indicator of other, other, other things and other dynamics. If we're gonna look at the top five global languages, we'll see different sizes of, of in terms of articles, we'll also see different sizes of contributors. So um, you'll see that English, and English is not the top language. Chinese is our top language in the world these days. And if you look at con contributors, so people who have edited Wikipedia in the last 30 days, uh, for every one million Mandarin speakers, six people edit Wikipedia. Um, for English, we have near almost a billion, and so for every one million English speakers, primary, secondary, 145 uh, people, users have edited Wikipedia in the last 30 days. For Arabic, we're at 11 per million, and for Hindi, it's two per million. So what's interesting is the top global languages have very different participation rates. Um, and we'll, we'll look at a few other examples later. But we also see trends where people who are, who are perhaps in this region may prefer to edit in English and may prefer to edit on topics that are not regional topics, which is an interesting uh, dynamic, particularly for the MENA region. So let's look at that participation a bit. And I think this is quite interesting. Um, so I've, I've mapped out the top 10 language Wikipedias, the top 10 languages and their Wikipedias. So we have English as the largest circle. The size of the circle is the size of the contributor base. So English has the most contributors per million. Um, you'll see Arabic is the dark green down towards the bottom. Um, and then we also have Portuguese, Russian, French, Spanish, Hindi. Um, so with English, we have like I said, 145 editors per million if, if you just look at the past 30 days and, it's, and a user or IP address making at least one edit. For Arabic, it's a, it's a much smaller community, so ed 11 editors per million. It's interesting, too, to throw in a, a non-top 10 language. So if you, you see Estonian, Estonian is quite small in terms of speakers and quite small in terms of Wikipedia, but quite large in terms of uh, participation. So there's only about one million Estonian speakers by some counts, but of those million, 468 participate in Wikipedia. It's one, I think it's our highest participation rate in terms of um, speakers of a language on Wikipedia, but it's a very small group and they're working in a very small wiki. Um, so let's get back to MENA for, for some other examples. So this is some research that was done by uh, Dr. Mark Graham from the Oxford Institute for Internet Research. Um, they, had an, uh, they have a focus on mapping the internet and the geographies of the internet, which is quite fascinating. I recommend that you all look at their website and their research. But they, they looked at MENA and Wikipedia in particular, and they saw some interesting factors for this region in particular. They found that the region is a net importer of edits that means people who are writing about the region are not in the region. So people in North America, um, Australia, Asia, they are the ones writing about the MENA region. And then when you look at people editing within MENA, so people living here in Oman or in the Gulf or in the Levant, they see that most of the edits are actually about North America. So they, it's almost like a, a Wikipedia brain drain, if you would like to frame it that way, where um, people who are in the region are writing about other stuff, people who are outside of the region are writing about the region. So if you think about representing 
Omani cultural heritage or Arab cultural identity or Arab history. Um, it could be diaspora who's editing, but it's also people not in the region who are editing. And those are the people who are representing the knowledge of the region to the world. An issue about that is always comes up in every conversation I have about Wikipedia is what about quality? Is it reliable? If anyone can edit, does it mean my, my nephew went on and edited and vandalized the article? So I'm going to look at English and Arabic in terms of um, article, uh, amount of articles, but also some content peer review factors. So on Wikipedia, there is a, there is a peer review system of um, grading articles in certain languages, and also most languages have a designation called good or featured articles. So not, not a lot of articles have those, but it's a very rigorous process. So in English, um, with over 5 million articles, we see that on less than 1%, about 0.57% of that content is peer reviewed and has that ar article quality. Um, so that's just a, a benchmark. For Arabic, with much fewer articles, it also has 0.21% of it has that designation. So I think what this says is there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, it also, we could talk about that process, whether that process has um, merits or flaws and is burdensome or laborious. Um, but what I want to point out, and this will get me talking about the classroom, is in Arabic, 10% of those good and featured articles come from students writing for Wikipedia as part of the Wikipedia education program. So I think one thing I want to emphasize is that student work is valuable um, and has a mutual benefit. So if we're looking at open knowledge, students are producing good content. Um, some of the best content on Arabic Wikipedia is from students in Egypt, in Jordan, in Saudi Arabia, uh, in Tunisia. And so that, that's kind of another an idea for our conversation. So to, just to say it again, students do make valuable c contributions to Wikipedia, and we can find a mutual benefit there. And I think we can also talk about be who benefits to educators, to the professors, to the institutions who sponsor this type of work, and to open knowledge and, and the, being a good global citizen. So the idea behind the Wikipedia education program is a simple idea. Students contribute to Wikipedia or one of the sister projects as part of their learning. So you can really structure a Wikipedia assignment or a Wikidata assignment or a Wiki source assignment or a Wiki voyage assignment to, to meet your learning objectives and to meet your syllabus. Um, so again, we, students participate in these projects. It's not just teaching them that they exist or how to read an article, but it gets them involved in knowledge production. Um, it gets their fingers dirty, so to speak. And when you think of Wikipedia, you think of text, you think of articles. And so that is a primary way in which in students contribute to Wikipedia. They may be writing new articles, they may be translating articles, but there's more than a just writing that a student can do. A student can do an evaluation of an article to see, is this a good article? How could it be improved? And then the student can make those improvements. Uh, students can illustrate concepts with photos, with videos, with animations, with illustrations. Students can translate content. Um, a lot of our students in this region will translate from other wikis into Arabic. Um, we have faculties at Cairo University who do Spanish, uh, Italian, German, Chinese, French, um, and English. So it's not just, just, just English-centric. Students can record sound. Um, there's, a really, there's really cool work that's being done where students include uh, sound bites on Wikipedia so you can hear Wikipedia, you can hear the pronunciation of a word that you don't know how to say. Um, and I think, importantly, we get some more diversity on Wikipedia. So if everyone who writes Wikipedia is a white man from North America, then we have one version of history. But we need more voices, more backgrounds, more opinions, more diverse sources on Wikipedia to get a global perspective and a balanced global perspective. So we're going to look at a few, few case studies. Um, and, and I'm also going to mention that um, I'm going to keep it fairly superficial here. And I do have a workshop following this where we can discuss it more uh, conversationally. 
Um, but this is one of my one of my favorite case studies at the moment. Um, so you'll see an, you see a student on the right, and she is in Mexico City, and she is in a, a sound recording lab. So there's a school called Tec de Monterrey in Mexico City, where they have recorded uh, place name pronunciation and uploaded that to Spanish Wikipedia. Um, if you're familiar with the history of Mexico, there a lot of the place names come from native languages that are not necessarily Spanish. They might have more Mayan or other native language roots. And so even if you speak Spanish, you may not know how to pronounce the place name. So they have recorded that for, for the Mexican cultural heritage. They've uploaded it to Wikipedia. And then if you go to a Wikipedia article, you can hear how you would pronounce uh, the name of a city, the name of a village, things like that. And they've also expanded to record Mexican cultural heritage through s sound and music um, by getting public domain or Creative Commons music recorded and uploaded to Wikimedia Commons. Um, and also a big focus that we have is focusing on native languages. So um, for this audience, it may mean Arabic or other languages, but we, we really want there to be anyone to access knowledge in their native language, not through Google Translate or not through any other machine translation. Just to have access to information in your native language is, I believe, it should be a, a fundamental right, and we should work together for that. So um, here we have um, one of our student leaders on the, on the far left. She is a teaching assistant at Cairo University, and she has led a program for, I think, at least three or four years where they have created thousands of articles in Arabic. Um, she's in the Spanish department, so they've been translating from Spanish into Arabic, and they made a huge improvement on the content on Wikipedia. Uh, also, anecdotally, the, the woman on the left, uh, the faculty, she's also one of the few female administrators on Arabic Wikipedia, and she got involved through the program. So she has also become a, a Wikipedian at, at heart. So if, if you're interested in this idea, there are a lot of materials to help get you started. Um, you can design a, an assignment that takes one day. You can design an assignment that takes one semester. Um, it can happen formally, it can happen informally as extracurricular or summer activities. So there's really no wrong way to do it. I just encourage you to think about how could you make Wikipedia part of your classroom, part of your teaching, part of your learning. Um, so I have a lot of these with me, um, and I'll be d passing out uh, hard copies in the workshop. So we have uh, a brochure called Instructor Basics, which t teaches you as an instructor how you can integra integrate Wikipedia into your teaching. Um, the orange brochure is my favorite. It's case studies. So it looks at different ways in which people are teaching with Wikipedia. Um, it can be language faculties, it can be IT faculties, everything in between. Um, and then there's an example syllabus too. Um, these, I also have a copy of these resources with me, but it's the basics on how to edit and how to work with images and how to evaluate Wikipedia. So. Um, I'll say it again, evaluation is a huge part of Wikipedia. Not, don't believe everything you read on the internet, facts matter. <laughs> we don't live in an alternate fact, fake news world. We need real facts and real information. And so Wikipedia is all about verifiability, neutrality. And you can learn about some of those things by evaluating the content on Wikipedia and looking at the transparent uh, process for publishing information. Um, but And also editing. I, editing at Wikipedia is, is intimidating because you everyone in the world can see what you do. <laughs> so um, if you write an article about um, Omani history and someone Googles Omani history, they're going to see the, the content that you helped create, uh, which is fantastic but can also be terrifying. Um, and illustrating. So looking at a lot at licensing. Um, licensing is a core part of Wikimedia Commons. Um, so public domain, creative commons attribution, uh, things like that. And we ha a lot of our, our resources are localized by communities into a lot of different languages. So this is just a snapshot. We have uh, resources in Arabic, in Spanish, in Hindi. Um, so no matter what language you're trying to target, there may be some resources that exist in that language, or we can work together to create them. Um, and we also have some online toolkits as well, as well that walk you through a program design process. So if you um, are, are wanting to work, teach with Wikipedia but don't know where to start, we have a step-by-step -step 
plan. So usually you start with a goal. So why, why are you teaching with Wikipedia? Be clear about that goal and then design accordingly. Um, so we, and then we have tools that help you run, evaluate, report on your experience. So um, that, that's all I had prepared for this presentation. I do have further, further content prepared for the workshop. Um, if you'd like to get a hold of me, just shoot me an email or find me in the hallway and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. Um, I don't believe we're set up for questions at this point, but we can do questions later uh, informally or part of, as part of the workshop. So thank you very much.